Hello, I'm Erin Howerson, Ragrex by Erin. Um, if this is your first time joining me, I welcome you. And if you're a return viewer um, to my other 80-something videos, then I uh, thank you as well for joining me. Um, we're going to be doing the five-strand braid-in rag rug using t-shirt yarn. Um, it is similar to the technique that I used for the oval, but it is a little different. And uh, that is a huge video for me. And I have a lot of people watching it. I've been requested many times to show how to do a circle and a uh, rectangle. I didn't know how to do it, so I had to get my busy mind uh, working on it. So I figured out how to do the rectangle, and I'm going to show it with you. This is the first prototype. It's uh, just kind of little wonky colors. And then this was my second one, um, as you can see. And it isn't finished here. And it's, uh, I'm going to finish it, so I will show you how to do that. But I wanted to give you a little demo of what it is that we're going to be doing, and then um, show you it part way through the technique itself. And then the next part two is actually going to be showing you how to get it started and go into more detail. But this is just an overview really quickly. So what you do is here, this is t-shirt yarn. I show you how to make the t-shirt yarn um, with these loops and to make it thicker and wider because the braid in rag rug, the lost art that I have, uh, another video that shows you how to do the oval, which you may want to view that. Um, you might want to use the other technique for a little bit thinner strips and also um, not doubled over and that is the how to cut a t-shirt in one long strip. I have a video on that too. So this is the one that shows how to do it with the loops. But let me show you how we do this. This is t-shirt yarn and you're going to take the last um, strip farthest out and you are going to go over and then under the one next to it and over and under and then we have safety pins here which I go into more detail when I show you the initial video and then you're going to go ahead and put it right in to the rug itself so after you watch this here, you may want to come around and see on the other side. Maybe you can see better, Mr. Cameraman, um, how to do that. So let's do it again. And um, did you think you got that, or do you, would you like to come around, Lyle, and see the other side? Okay, so here we've got it here. Again, we take the farthest one out, and we cross over, and then go under the next one. Over, and under, and then we feed it in. I don't know if you can see that, what, you're, what I'm feeding in. Mm -mm. What? It's good. Okay, good. It's really important that you can see this technique. I'm going to do it one more time, and then you can watch part two, and that will show you actually, um, this, this will show you how to get it started. It's not part one, actually. I show you how to do the initial braid right after this. Under, over, under. Hmm. Over, under, there we go. So even I have to think for a minute. And you're going to slip it in right here. So following this, we'll start, start with the very beginning part of how to do the initial braid. But there you have it. So if you want to continue watching to, and watch this series, that's what we'll be doing. Thank you. Okay, we're going to get started with the initial um, braid. This is a five-strand stra um, um, braid that we're going to be doing for this braid and rug. And I'm going to talk to you about the tools and how I got it started and how some ways to figure this out and what you're going to be using. So, uh, of course, a good pair of scissors if you watch my other videos is always important. And on this, um, you can use something else. You can use um, tapestry needles. Um, but And I do that as well. But I use these... Um, big safety pins um, and you need five of those so you can use small ones big ones I just happen to have uh, big ones because I use them for quilting and other things so you use what's good for you or what you have around so this is what we're going to be working on is the initial braid so it's a five strand braid and uh, then once we've got that started I will go on and show you how to get around this first corner by braiding it in as we go and I also will be showing you how to do the last corner over there Lyle, um, over here as well so I'm going to show you how to do the first corner and then I'm going to come over here and show you how to do the next corner and all those will be the same and I'll also make sure I show you how to finish it as well but this is what we're starting on is the initial braid let's talk about this 
These take a lot of t-shirts to do this, and there's no way of me telling. There will always be people that write to me, how many t-shirts does this project take? There's no way for me to tell you. When I showed my uh, t-shirt yarn that you can see, it used a really small t-shirt, uh, a, a small or an extra small t-shirt because I wanted to do it quickly. But I have extra large t-shirts or 2x t-shirts. There's no way of me for telling you how many it's going to take. You know, I would allow 30 um, t-shirts. Uh, to make one of these rugs, but you may need 60 or 80. It just depends on how big your rug is going to be, how wide you make your strips, and how tight you do your work. Um, this is what we're going to be working on today. And I'm kind of limited in my colors because this is like my sixth rug that I'm working on, so I had to kind of think in my brain, how can I make this look good? And let me talk to you about that because some of you have questions about that too. I'm going to be using two different blacks, um, and I'm going to continue on. So two strands of mine are going to be black. And um, because I have quite a few black t-shirts, so there's two strands of that. I don't have much of a green, a yellow type of thing, um, so I want there to be a little bit of spark of color. So these are going to be interspersed together um, as one strand. Then I have quite a few uh, gray or charcoal kind of uh, t-shirts as well in my supply, so I'm going to make this a strand. And then I'm going to use white because uh, white is uh, fairly readily available as well. So there's five strands, two in black, one in charcoal, one with a gray-yellow, I mean a green-yellow combo, and then white. So let me show you how I get this braid started, um, and let's see what you think. So I'm going to take the two blacks, and this would be two different colors, so or two different strands, because I'm going to connect them together and they're going to be two different parts of the strand to start off with. So you're going to put your loops through here and I show you how to do the sheet yarn on another video. Okay, and you can view that one and that'll be down in the link. Okay, and then you're just going to flatten this out a little bit so it makes the knot a little nicer. We're going to do it again, so don't worry. So this is actually going to be hanging like this and there's two different strands, but I happen to use black and I thought if I use both black together it would hide it a little bit better. Okay, and these are going to be my next colors to get the initial braid started. This isn't the only way to do this. I know some of you will write to me, oh you have a better way to do it. Great, do your better way. Um, this took a lot of prep and a lot of time and um, I hope that it will be beneficial and if you come up with some other ideas and you want to share it, that's fine. Um, but let me get you started on this technique. So you loop that in there. And then you have to lay it flat. And see, I try to hide that when I can, the seam. And I just kind of pull it. And see how it just pulls flat? And see, now you've got a flatter knot. Okay, so now we have four strands. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do one more on this low, this short piece over here because it's going to be fairly short. What you are not going to want to do is you're not going to want to make these strands too long. Some of you will think, hey, I'm so smart, I'm going to do it all together and have this long strand. Well, I thought I was smart too. And not so smart, it just gets a big tangled mess. So that's why uh, making it in one long strip sometimes can be a problem because it's um, more tangling than anything else. Um, the braid and rug... Um, one that I have the Lost Art has four strands. You could do that with five and using the same technique. And this one happens to, I'm doing it with five. So here you have your four different strands coming down. This is going to be the center, the beginning part. And then what I take is the fifth one. I'm using white because I thought it would show off a lot for you. Um, you're going to kind of, I kind of, instead of putting the knots on top of each other, see how the knots are like this together? I just kind of sent them off a little bit so it's not so bulky right there together. I put them, um, they're still overlapping, but the biggest part of the knot is on both sides. Then you're going to take your other color or your other strand. You could do it all in one color if you want. There's no reason why you can't. You're going to go through your loop and you're going to pull it. Okay. You can have it together, you can have it apart, whatever. You're going to have to do some experimenting. Okay? So here's your five strands, and this is how you make your initial braid to make your five strand rectangle braid and rug. So you're going to put three on one side 
and two on the other. Let me move all this stuff away just a little bit, but I don't want to completely in case I have to go to it and add more. So you're going to have your three strands. See how they're doubled up? But I like the thickness of that. That's why I've done this technique, and they're wider strands. You're going to take the one that's on the three sides. See, there's three, one, two, three, and two over here. And you're going to cross over. We're just braiding. And then cross over, and then under. And now this one is moved to this side. Okay, so you're going to take your outermost one on the three, and you're going to go over, and then under the third one, to get it started a little bit at the beginning, because if you have someone to hold it for you, or, you know, people say, I put it underneath my sewing machine, and it clips it, and holds it, or I use a, a board, that's great, do whatever works for you, okay? Trick to this braid and rug and that some of you have problems with my lost art round oval rug rather is because you pull it too tight. Please don't pull it too tight. You're going to place it more than pull it. Okay? You're going to cross over. Remember where I got the three strands? Cross over with the outer one and then go under and see how it's braiding and see how I'm just laying it in. Now we have the three strands over here. I'm going to take the outermost one, cross over, and then under. And now this has been switched to the side with three. I'm going to do a couple more. Over and under. And now the white is on this side. Making sure you don't pull it too tight. You're going to cup it up like a bowl. You're going to feel frustrated. Um, this is one of the reasons why we do it with t-shirt yarn. And not sheet yarn. Once you get your technique and you're pretty good at this with the t-shirt yarn and you don't have buckling, then you can go ahead and switch over maybe to do some t-shirt yarn or something that doesn't give. Okay, a couple more and then we'll move on to the first corner. Okay, so see how that's looking? All right. That's how you start your first um, initial braid. Make it as long as you want. Um, I did mine about uh, 28 or 40 to 40 on mine. You can do it the short way, so you're running back and forth like this um, quickly, or you can have it where you're running back in a longer distance, and the narrower part will be here. So you're going to have to do some experimenting with that and see how you want your rug to look. Okay, thank you.